Good morning, good morning, good morning, you lovely lot. It's Friday and it's been a bit wet outside. I could hear the cars driving past and it sounded like it had rained. But now the sun is out and it's looking like it's drying up. And I'm thinking, only thinking, mind you, but I might do it, about going out in the van today to somewhere different, not too far from here, but somewhere different, and having a walk and then maybe a cup of tea afterwards and hanging out in the van. Afterwards, having a bit of spog time. If those of you who are new here don't know, I have a converted Renault Master camper van um, that I bought already converted in the August before lockdown happened. I had about six months of being able to go out and about in spog in freezing cold weather mainly because I hadn't got a diesel heater at that point and then lockdown happened yes it did <laughs> so if you check out my van life playlist you will see my adventures that I've been on in Spog I have managed to get away here and there for the odd night weekend and a couple of longer trips um with Daryl and Keith from Camper Van Tales. So you'll find those all in my playlist. So it's about a bit of a backstory. And I was hoping to get a lot more van life videos that so wouldn't just be a daily vlog channel and childcare channel. It would also be van life. Um, but yes, COVID happened. Anyway, I am thinking, I digress, I'm thinking of getting out in Spog today and there's something called the Maharaja's Well in a village not very far from here. There's a bit of a story about how a chap from this particular village went and helped uh, somebody build a Maharaja, Maharaja, whatever they call Ma, Maharaja, Maharaja. I said it a minute ago, I can't say it now. Maharaja. You know what I mean? One of those people. <laughs> um Anyway, yes, he went and helped him build these wells in India. And anyway, he happened to mention about how, this was back in the 1800s, uh, how sometimes there can be water shortages in the Chilterns, which is obviously not very far from me. I'm sure in my videos you've seen the Chilterns in the distance. Um, I guess because it's chalk and maybe it drains the water away easily. I've never found the Chilterns to be particularly particularly dry but I wasn't around in the 1800s and I suppose if you weren't relying on Thames water to come and pump your water to you it might have been dry um so yes uh he paid for them to have the Maharaja him paid for this guy to have a well built in this village this village is called Stoke Row and uh, he also sent over a huge, great, big uh, elephant, like elephant statue, um, which is on the well. It's a very ornate well. So I'm hoping to go there. If I don't go there today, I will go there hopefully over the weekend and have a look. I think I'll go today. It does look quite nice out there. So, uh, yeah, I hope I've got that story right. I think there is a board that tells you more about it anyway. Um, so if I've got that slightly wrong, be ready for some corrections. But I thought I'd do that. Um, that's if I don't get arrested imminently, um, because I've had three threats of being arrested imminently um, in the past 24 hours. I mean, this comes from a very reliable source. And I've kind of decided it might just be worth because I've I've ignored the warnings now three times. So it might just be in my best interest to lay here in bed and wait for the police to bash down my door with the warrant for my arrest and uh, come and arrest me. Because apparently, according to a recorded message that I've had three times on my answer phone in the last 24 hours, if I do not contact this company, then the fraud case against me will be carried out and a warrant for my arrest will be issued immediately and I will be arrested shortly. They haven't made it to me in the last 24 hours so I might be okay. 
I don't know. Something tells me it might be a scam. Maybe. Anyway, who knew I was such a criminal? Wanted criminal, but they are giving me plenty of warnings that I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the best way to catch a criminal is to tell them they will be arrested imminently. Ugh. Anyway, yes, have I got anything else to share? I've been waffling for six minutes. I'm going to get out of this bed at some point. I've just made myself a cup of tea, so it won't be imminently. Um... But I will be making, uh, drinking my tea and then I'll get dressed. And then I'm going to put this in the wash before I go out. Um, yeah. I mean, I've, you know, been keeping up on top of the housework and the laundry and stuff. And dusting and bits throughout the week. So I don't really need to do any big housework. Not really. Right, so I'm going to go drink my tea. I've decided to go. So I'm on my way to a place called Stoke Row. Uh, it's about half an hour from here, so I'm going to head off now. So those jet fighter planes <laughs> yeah in the summer we get a lot of those very noisy jet fighter planes come over as well on their test flights waking up the children when I put them down for a little sleep outside and if you look that way I don't know if you can see there's some of the uh, little army trucks well not little big army trucks and stuff over there Here we are. It is an overcast day. The Maharaja of Benares. That's who paid for it. £400 apparently it cost to build it, to dig down. Wallingford is a local town and that's where all of this ironwork was built, constructed the mechanism for drawing up the water. Each of those barrels lifted seven gallons, seven gallons? I'm sure it was seven gallons. And it took 10 minutes, roughly, for one barrel to come up using this mechanism. So this here is the East India Company official from England, Edward Anderton Reed. And this is his friend, Ishri Purshad, the Maharaja of Benares in 1860. So the building of this came about because of their friendship um, so Reed used to tell tales about how bad things were back in Oxfordshire, um, you know, during drought seasons. 
um, because we're on uh, chalk up on the Chilterns, everything just drained away. There are no rivers, um, you know, at the top of a hill. So there was limited access to clean water. So the villagers in this parish just had sort of dirty ponds and deserted clay pits to get their water from. Washing clothes here and laundry days were a big no-no. That would have been a waste of water. Urchins, poor children, would get thumped for using the last of the water to quench their thirst. And the Maharaja realised there was quite a similarity between this Chiltern, Oxfordshire village and, uh, and his own. So the design for this came about because the Raj couldn't come to England and so he relied on photos of what was being built and so they wanted to make that something for him to be proud of. A real visual piece for his photographs. So to fully convey the splendour of the gift, a fine superstructure was built above the well. So this is what they've built. Reed wanted the design to uh, replicate a pinnacle on part of the palace of Ramangar, which I've probably pronounced wrong, which is where they often sat and discussed matters of public utility. That there is the wellkeeper's cottage. The person living in there would have originally manned the well, looked after it, maintained it. I think it looks like Hagrid's house. Apparently it is a design from India. It's octagonal. It does remind me of Brendan's Lego set back home. There's a picture here of a very basic kitchen that used to be inside the warden's cottage, inside that well cottage, before it was restored. Wow, very rustic. And this is a picture from 1910 of the wellkeeper, Mrs. Hewitt, and her niece, Miss Cic Cicely Turner, in front of the cottage. It's covered in ivy. This area here is called the Ishri Bar and it was full of cherry trees which would help pay for the running of the well and the maintaining of the cottage. There's also a pond built that also has an Indian name but I can't remember what it is. It's a bit overgrown now. Very good for nature though. They won't mind it overgrown. But there's a walkway around here. I'll take you for a little wander. We might learn a bit more about the area. This elephant statue here was built to celebrate 150 years of the well. It's like he's got his own little moat around the bottom of it. It's all squelchy and muddy. Ew. Let's go up his steps onto the mound. Hello Mr Elephant. I do like elephants. They are my favourite animals. Now 
Ah, there's the pond over there. It is a bit overgrown, but the other bit must have just been a runoff that I saw. So the site of the Ishri Bar had been on open common land, which is why it's just this big space. It was full of clay pits, which explains the boggy ground. That's how the irregular shaped uh, sort of water pits would have looked back in the day. From the clay pits. Obviously it's changed a bit now. So despite it being very chilly, and me having a cold nose and cold hands, and it being quite muddy, I am glad I came today. Had no idea it was there until I just happened to be looking for a walk and this thing popped up and I was like, well, what is that? It's amazing what can be so close but you don't even know about. I bet kids have a great time mucking about in these ponds and making bridges onto the island in the middle. I know I would. And I can imagine in another couple of months, all those cherry trees will be covered in blossom. And in the summer, I'm sure people come and pick the cherries. Since it's on common land, I'm assuming you can help yourself. Oh, duck. Oh, just going over the hedge. <laughs> Scared of duck. Yeah, it's a nice little spot. I'm just gonna have a bit of an explore and then I'm gonna go back to the van and have a cup of tea. And also I need to take some money over and put a donation into the Wells donation box. Because I feel if you visit these places, you should contribute to their upkeep. See, van lifers support local communities. I could have put the kettle on in here but I've bought myself a cup of tea from the local shop and a gorgeous gluten-free egg and bacon sandwich with some brown sauce. Yes please. I'm currently trying to get the diesel heater working because if you remember I uh, let it go empty. I let the tank run down on my last trip out. Oh, I dropped my egg everywhere which is very silly of me. But um, I'm hoping it just needs a bit of priming to pump all the fuel through. Might have to turn it on a couple of times, then it'll cut off and I'll have to do it again. <laughs> this is so nice on a cold day. Uh oh, drippage. But the diesel heat has warmed up beautifully. So I've been here about an hour just hanging out. It's not the best view from here because I'm parked in the Stoke Row Village Hall car park, which is where they advise you to park when you visit the well. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and I picked up this little booklet as well. I put a pound in the thing and they'd got booklets for sale. So I've picked that up. There's probably loads of history I've not told you about, um, but yeah. If you do come and visit, there's loads of things to read about. The cost of the well and the superstructure was £353.13 shillings. Seven, what's D? Pennies? I don't know. With the machinery and the elephant, a further £39.10 shillings. The well's considerable expense can be appreciated when compared to the cost of building the well warden's cottage at 74 shillings no 74 pounds 14 shillings and 6d which i think is pennies i'm not sure i'm not sure but yeah that was a, a very kind gift it obviously made a huge difference to the lives of the people in the chilterns especially in stoke row um you know fresh water when before they could end up rationing and running out. I mean, must have been pretty bad at times. And obviously if you don't have water, then how do you grow crops and what have you? Um, yeah, it must have been a huge difference. And then that was used until 
running water was piped throughout the country I guess until Stoke Row became a village with running water and they didn't need to use the well anymore but I think that's a, a nice link between India and the UK a tiny Oxfordshire community in the Chilterns I can't believe I've lived half an hour away from this and didn't even know it was here I just find it really I mean I wonder how many other things are hidden that I don't know about and that has been one of the good things about doing YouTube is that I have been almost I've encouraged I've been encouraged by wanting to make videos um, into finding out more about this country but also about finding out what is on my doorstep and the history of things and there are just these little treasures hidden around that they're not easy to find but like I said I was just looking for a new route to walk and thought if I can drive into one of these villages park up and go for a nice hike it'll be a change of scenery and it just this little thing Maharaj as well popped up and I was thinking never heard of that wonder what it is and there it was this whole interesting story of a life-changing event paid for by the Raj Raj Mahar can't say it again I've been saying it fine you know who I mean by him <laughs> by him yeah anyway I think this video is probably a good 20 minutes now which is I don't like to go over 20 minutes um, so I'm going to end the vlog here even though I haven't finished the day um, thank you very much for watching hope you found today's van life video historical Oxfordshire countryside info vlog interesting and um, yeah it's nice to be out in the van again doing something and before long I will be out in Spog a lot more bringing you a lot more interesting van life videos and uh, interesting elements of the UK so if you're not subbed sub I don't often say that but if you're not subbed sub it's not all about childcare on this channel it just has been recently <laughs> it's not always about daily vlogs although it has been recently but there is more to this channel when Covid rules allow anyway thanks for watching and I will see you all tomorrow